baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6.3-6. 6, 3 -6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Is there anybody in the house that loves the Lord this morning? Come on, I wonder if there's anybody that's glad to be in the presence of the Almighty. I wonder if there's anybody in the house that can act like you love Jesus. Come on, I wonder if there's anybody in the house that you're blood bought, that you're sanctified, that you're baptized in the name that's above every name, that you're filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody in the house that knows who Jesus is? Yes, God, Jesus. Hey, Amen. It truly is so good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. To be in this house is something that we should all desire and something that we should never take lightly. And I am so glad to be with new life this morning. Amen. Anybody love what you feel in the house this morning? Amen. Such a sweet spirit of worship. And I know that you've been standing and worshiping. And I want to take this time to humbly send my appreciation to your pastor for allowing me to stand behind this sacred desk this morning, for asking me to come to be a part of this revival. I'm so grateful that I know that there are men on the other side of the world, so to speak, in another state that have a passion for winning souls and I'm so grateful that I know your pastor his passion his heart and you ought to be glad to have a man of God that's gonna go in the highways and the byways I don't know about you but I love a pastor that can worship in the midst of worship I don't know about you but I can use a pastor that'll preach to me whether I like it or not to save my soul from a burning hell Amen. I also want to give honor to my pastor, another young man who's a revivalist at heart. He has spoken so many things into my life. He's been my mentor, my friend. And uh, I had to take time to, to introduce myself to the, the bus ministry, kids in the back. And uh, normally on a Sunday morning, my wife and I gas up a 40 passenger bus and we're driving around the city knocking doors and inviting people to the house of God and I have a great passion for reaching young people and I'm so glad that they're in the sanctuary this morning amen amen I'm grateful for my wife my beautiful wife who's here for her special prayers and fasting and for the services and uh, the fellowship has been phenomenal. We've, we've been here since Friday and I got a chance to sneak in on the youth service on Friday night and hear my good friend, Brother Jermaine Irvin, preach in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And this weekend wouldn't be more perfect. It couldn't be more perfect than if the Holy Ghost showed up in this service this morning. And I don't know about you, but I can use the Holy Ghost to saturate this place. Come on, I can use God to sit down on this sanctuary and minister to my heart and minister to my soul that I can leave the doors of this church different than I came. Is there anybody in the house that came to have good old apostolic church? Is there anybody in the house that came to lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, while you're standing, if you can be so kind to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, 
chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, I've prayed and prayed and prayed. And I found myself doing less studying and more praying. Because I believe that if, if we're going to be used as people of God, we have to find the heartbeat of God. Amen. Luke chapter 15. I'd like to begin at verse 3 this morning. When you have it, say amen. amen. Luke chapter 15, verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, do it not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he come home, he called together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you likewise, that there's joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over the ninety and nine just persons who need no repentance. But this morning I want to key in on verse number eight of this passage. It says, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, do it not light a candle and sweep the house. Everybody say sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it amen and I toiled and was torn between two titles for this message and if I can preach this morning if I had a subject for this morning I want to preach on the subject the cleaning of the house and if I had to subtitle this message it would be finding what's missing is there anybody in this house that needs to find some direction this morning? If you can be so kind to put your Bibles down and tap into the Holy Ghost right now and pray that the Holy Ghost would help us. God, we pray right now in the midst of this spirit-filled service. God, that your mighty hand, God, will be released in this house. God, we ask God for your anointing and your covering, God, Jesus. God, to fill every corner of this sanctuary right now, God. God, we lay our hearts at your feet. God, we lay our minds, God, before your feet, Jesus. God, purify us today. God, cleanse us. God, wash us, Jesus. Make us clean. God, we ask you, God, to let us get a hold of the things, God, that we've lost. God, let us get a hold of the things that we seek after. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, God, we ask that your spirit, God, will fill this place and your anointing will cover our feeble souls. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you love the Lord this morning, somebody clap your hands unto God. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. The passage in scripture that we read this morning, I do not wish to take it out of context. I am well aware of its meaning. I am well aware of what it means in its correct context of scripture. The parable of the lost coin is talking about a woman who lost one coin. She had 10 in her possession and she had discontent in her heart. She was not satisfied by any means that she had one coin missing and she found the need to go and search for it. And I know that this parable is talking about one sinner that cometh to repentance. But I believe that all scripture is profitable. Amen. And I know that there's some, some, some simplicity in scriptures that we read and as I begin to read this scripture I, be, I begin to think about its, its simplicity and context in that sometimes in our physical lives there are, there are things that goes missing how many have lost their keys before nobody wants to be honest am I the only one lost my keys before raise your hand if you've lost money before yeah that's all everybody in the house lost money amen and what's uneasy about losing something is not knowing where to look for it 
What is uneasy about losing something is the idea that you may never get it back in your possession. But I put myself in the mindset of this lady, this woman, that it had to be even more frustrating, Brother Sutton, to have something that you lost and you lost it in the house. Knowing that it was right up under her nose and she may have searched for it day in and day out and, and could not find it. She lost it in the house and she, she was baffled. Her mind had to be confused of where this coin is. And I got joy in my heart this morning because I realized that she wasn't satisfied with just having nine coins. She wasn't satisfied with just having almost everything that she wanted, but she found something in her heart to say that if I'm going to be whole, I have to have all 10 coins in my possession. If, if I'm going to be satisfied and, and if I'm going to be happy, I need to have all of it and not some of it. And some of us, we've come into the church this morning. We've lost things in our life. We, we've been baptized in the name of Jesus and we're filled with the Holy Ghost. And one time, we had all 10 coins, brother. At one time, we can pray things and it would happen. We can think things and on faith, God will begin to move. But in the midst of the course of life, situations and, and trials and tribulations and, and sin that comes in our heart begin to clutter our house. And when you try to find your prayer life, you don't know where to look for it at. And when you try to find your joy, you don't know where to begin to look. And when you find, try to find your happiness, there's no smile to be found. But I'm here to tell you this morning that if you begin to sweep your house, and if you begin to clean your heart, and you begin to clean your mind, and say, Jesus, I need you to clean me up. That's somebody in this house, you can find what you're missing. That's somebody in this house, you can find what you're looking for. <laughs> Somebody clap your hands up to God this morning. There are some of you, you, you may have not been sold on this God thing. And you've came into the sanctuary this morning with trouble on your heart and trouble in your mind. And you're so sick and tired of crying at night that you don't even know what to do. And your face is, is wet with tears and your, your pillows wet with tears. And, I, and you've been searching and you've been looking and you've been trying to find what's missing. And I'm here to tell you this morning that if you're in the house of God, let me tell you, honey, you're in the best place you can be. If you're in the house of God this morning, you're in the best place for your soul. If your house is in a terrible condition if your soul is in a dirty condition the house is the best place that you can find what's missing somebody give praise unto God this morning hallelujah Jesus uh, come on I'm on a mission this morning I gotta find what's missing in my heart some of us don't like to admit when we have a dirty house we don't like to talk about when we have a dirty house we can't invite our family and friends over when we have a dirty house. And my Bible tells me that, that God would like and to desire to dwell in the temple of his people. That God is a gentleman and he would want to visit with you. He would like to commune with you. But I'm thinking about that I'm made in the image of man. And I know that there's no man that likes living in a dirty house. And God is the same way that if your heart is not clean and if your, your life is not right, he, he's going to be a gentleman and say, I'll, I'll wait till you clean things up. I'll wait till you make up your mind to pull some things from under the rug. God wants to be in your house. But in April, they call it spring cleaning time. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? You see, spring cleaning time is a special time of year. You may be seated. It's a special time of year because it's a time that people, they take all their time and set it aside. And they say, I'm going to spend some time cleaning this old house. And they begin to pack up boxes and they begin to, to label things and they begin to throw things that's been laying around for years. And they begin to, to find dirt where dirt just doesn't normally be found. And, and they want to make sure that their house is in tip top condition. But the problem is, most of us, when it comes to church, we don't want to do a spring cleaning. We want to do a general cleaning. 
When it comes to church, some of us walk into the house and act like we don't have sin and act like there's nothing wrong with me. There's, there's nothing that, that needs cleaning. But I'm here to tell you the Bible says that all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. And, and all you got to do is be honest with yourself and say, God, I know there's some things in my life that's hidden. I know there's some things in my life that's dirty. I, I know there's some things in my life that's messed up. God, I need you to clean me up. Come on, some of you not agreeing. I could preach to a library, but there's some of you in this house. You've been weary. Your mind's been messed up. You can't make way out of anything. And all you got to do is begin to get out your spiritual broom and sweep out your house. Come on, somebody praise God in this place. <laughs> Repentance. It's an easy way to clean your house. Amen. Baptism in the precious name of Jesus is how you begin to clean your house. Because what you don't realize is there's power in the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 9 and 22 says that, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And I'm so glad that there was a God that he, over 2,000 years ago that he stretched his arms out wide. And as his, his blood was running down his face, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Who was he talking to? He was talking to you in the future. He was saying, I know there's some things you're going to hide in your house. I, I know there's some things you're going to cover up in your closet. But I'm the God that came to save. I'm the God that came to make you whole. I'm the God that came to fill your life and give you what's missing. Anybody glad for the blood of Jesus this morning? Anybody glad for the blood that ran down the face of my Savior? That as he said it is finished, uh, that he began to sweep out my dirty house. Uh, that as he was dying for my sins, uh, he said, I love you. What more love than this? Uh, than a man to lay down his life for a friend. Uh, somebody give God praise. But in the reality of things, there are some of us that we, we, don't, we don't like to be good cleaners. See, we think that if no one sees my dirt, if no one sees the, the things that are causing my heart to be filthy, that if nobody sees what's going on behind closed doors, uh, that my house is clean when you come in. And you, and you stuff things in the closet. You got some secrets that you're covering up. Uh, and you begin to sweep things under the rug and you, you come into the presence of God and you say, God, I, I want to live for you. But God is not a foolish man. God is not a man as if he doesn't know. You might can fool your brother. You might can fool your sister. But God knows the intents of your heart. Uh, God knows the intents of your mind. Mind. And if we are honest this morning, there's some things on the inside of this old wretched man that I can't get rid of myself. And I need Jesus to come and wash me. And I need Jesus to come and cleanse me. And I need Jesus to come and make me whole. Is there anybody in this house that want to clean your house? You see, I was prepared because I knew some people wasn't going to want to agree with that. But the reason is, is we got to diagnose why our houses are dirty. Can we do that this morning? The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 35, verse 3, I'm sorry. It says, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? And but not consider it the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull that moat that is in thine eye. And behold, there's a beam in thine own eye. And the reason why most of us walk around with things missing in our lives and the reason why there's stuff that's messed up and it's unattended to and there's, and there's dust clogged up in our heart uh, is because we spend so much time judging and criticizing the man next to us. Uh, but the Bible says if there's a beam in your eye, 
Don't go pulling for the moat in your brother eye. There's an old song that says, uh, sweep around your own front door before you try to come sweep around mine. And I'm here to tell you that if you're going to be saved in this dying generation, you got to save your soul first. You got to clean your house first. You got to live for God for yourself first. Come on, you, you, you take your broom and you say, sister, I, I think something's wrong with you. I think you need prayer. No, honey, it's me that's standing in the need of prayer. It's me that needs Jesus. Uh, every day I wake up, uh, I got to put my face to the floor and say, God, is there anything in me that's not like you? Somebody praise God if you love him. Come on, somebody give God some praise if you're glad that you have a God that cares enough to clean your soul. Come on, I said, praise him some more. Praise him some more. The Holy Ghost is here. Come on, God is in this place. Come on, some of you, that's some things that, that just triggered in your mind. There's some things that just triggered in your heart. It, it said, I, I've been praying about something, preacher, but I don't know what to do. I, I've been thinking about something, preacher, but I don't know what to do. Let me tell you what you do, baby. You get to Jesus. You ask God to clean you up. You ask God to make you right. You ask God to touch you. And I guarantee you, you'll leave this, this church with your house clean this morning. Somebody praise God one more time. Problem number two. I can remember growing up, there were some kids that my mom didn't invite to our house. <laughs> because every time they came to our house, my toys would end up broken. There were some people my mom couldn't invite to our house because every time they came to our house, they would leave our house and stuff would leave with them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, I know I set this wallet right there. And the wallet's missing. And the reason why some of us have things messed up in our house is because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he walketh in dry places. He's seeking rest and he findeth none. And then said, I will return to my house from which I came out. And when he has come, he find it empty and swept. The devil knows that when you come to a Sunday morning service, that you come to the altar and you pray and you ask God to forgive you. And you ask God to make you clean and you ask God to help you. And you leave the sanctuary feeling good. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. But he knows soon as you get out of the doors of the church that he's been looking for dry places out there and can't find none. And he says, ah, you know what? I'm going I'm to go back to that, that place I just came from. And the Bible says that he finds it swept and empty. And he says, yeah, buddy, I found a place to stay. And the devil knows that when you walk out of the doors of the church, he's waiting on you. But the problem is, most of us, we don't kick the devil out and keep him out. We invite the devil right back in. We go to church and we say, God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. On Sunday. And you're cursing in the parking lot on Monday. But God is a God that is not mocked. And if you want to be made whole, you got to live for him on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday again. And say, God, I want to stay clean. God, I want to stay full of your spirit. God, I want to stay whole. You got to beware of who you let in your house because uh, the Bible says that the devil cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. All he wants to do is steal your joy that you got on Sunday morning. All he wants to do is steal your Holy Ghost uh, that you got on Sunday morning. But some of you need to kick the devil out. Some of you need to say, devil, you have no place in my marriage. Devil, you have no place in my family. Take your hands off my children. You're not going to destroy this house. Come on, somebody getting mad at the devil right now. 
Come on, somebody get mad at the devil. Some of you can't praise God because because you big got stuff in your house that's dirty. Some of you can't pray because you got stuff in your closet that's dirty. But you need to kick the devil out. You got to beware of who you let in your house. The devil has no room in this house. I got a sign, biggest cuff, no vacancy for the devil. You can't play in pity pat with sin and think it's going to be okay. You can't play in pity pat church and, and, and sit on the pew, clap your hands, just pretty and pretty and go and think you're going to fight a devil and win. The devil is alive. The devil will eat you up every day you get a chance. And the devil will eat you up if you're not coming with the right spirit. But you got to say, God, there's nothing in me that is clean except you be in me. God, there's nothing that is in me that is right except you feel this old wretched soul. God, there's nothing in my mind that's pure unless I have the mind of Christ. There's nothing in my heart that's worthy of serving God unless I have a heart after God somebody clap your hands into God this morning come on somebody clap we're almost there we're getting there we're getting there there are some things some ways that Statistically speaking, we're told on how we find something that is missing. The first major reason on how we can find what's missing in our lives. Society tells us that we have to backtrack to the places that we've been. We got to take some step back and pause and clear our mind and say, okay, I have to find out where I've been. I have to backtrack the places I've came from. <laughs> what makes me laugh is your family and your friends can't sympathize when you're going through stuff. Your family and friends, when you're searching and you're seeking after God, they don't understand what you're looking for. And there's always that nagging friend that said, well, where was the last place you had it? <laughs> well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be looking for it. The devil intimidates and antagonizes. When you come to church and you feel the spirit of God moving and you want to clap your hands and you, you want to jump and you want to leap and you want to run, but you don't know where your praise is hitting at. You don't know what happened, what caused you to lose your worship in the house of God. And the devil said, well, where did you last have it at? Where did, you, where did you last lose it at? I, I think it was about three trials back. I don't know where it's at, but, but I, I got to make my way and find it. And let me tell you something, honey. If you come into the house of God and you don't, you don't know how to praise God anymore, you're not going to find it sitting on the pew. If you don't know how to worship God anymore, you're not going to find it if you're coming to the church and your pants too stiff to worship and your shirt is too, too, too ironed out to praise God and lift your hands and your, and your hair is curled just right and you don't want sweat to roll down your eyes and, and you don't... You don't, you don't know where your praise is at, but let me tell you where it's at. You got to backtrack and say, God, I, I remember the storm when the devil stole my joy. I remember the day when the enemy stole some things out of my house. And I got to praise God again. I got to worship God again. I'm going to stand on my feet. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to pat my feet. I'm going to leap for joy. I'm going to run the aisles. I'm going to give God a praise. I got to find what's missing. Come on, if you clap your hands right now, guess what? You're starting to find your praise. Uh, if you leap for joy right now where you're at, you're starting to find your praise. Uh, come on, I feel the Holy Ghost just sat on this sanctuary. If you praise God when you're looking for stuff, uh, God will begin to clean your house faster. If you worship God when you're looking for stuff, God's going to sweep you out faster. King David said, remove not the old landmark. Some of us don't know how to pray anymore. Am I okay right now, pastor? Appreciate that. But some of you got to get back to the altar. Some of us, you've came 
so close to finding what you've been looking for. You've came so close to getting the hand of God in your house and in your life to where there's nothing that the devil can do to take it from you. But every time you get to the altar and you begin to lift up your hands, there's a, there's a weight on your heart. There's a weight on your mind because you can't, you can't pray right because you're thinking about what you got in your closet. You're thinking about what you done swept under the rug that you don't want nobody to know about. You're thinking about the stuff that's in your life that's hidden. It's, 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 it's hidden in the dark place of your heart. And you tucked away some bitterness at that person that, that you just can't forgive. And you tucked away some things in your life for uh, the person that did you wrong. But uh, let me tell you, baby, if you're bitter in your heart this morning, the only person you're hurting is yourself. Uh, bitterness is like a poison that you're drinking and hope that it hurts your enemy. It's not going to hurt anybody else but you. Uh, it's not going to destroy anybody else but yours. Uh, it's not going to mess up anything else. Uh, but you uh, it's going to destroy your walk with God uh, it's going to destroy your prayer life with God uh, and when you try to find your worship uh, and when you try to find the prayers uh, you can't find what's missing you can't find what you're looking for your joy you can't find it when you want it it's the hardest thing when you, you're looking for something and you really need something, Brother Justin. And when you go to look for it because you need it, you can't find it. How in the world we're going to be the church and we saving souls and we're calling people to come to the house of God and say God is so good. He'll, he'll change your life. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. And you ain't smiling months. How are you going to pray and ask God? For blessings and you can't praise them in advance the Bible says and I don't want to take this out of context because I know what it means it says to leap for joy in common English language when you're doing something for something that means it hadn't got there yet and some of you, you're saying, God, I, I don't feel like worshiping on Sunday morning. I, I got too much in my mind. I, I got too much in my heart. I, I can't get my, my, my mind straight. I, I can't think. Well, who asked you to think? The Bible says to come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I don't hear no thinking in that. That's just an action. It's a requirement. It's a commandment that you just got to do it. You don't feel like it, but you just got to do it. And if the Bible says leap for joy, I might not have it, but guess what I'm going to do? Guess what I'm going to do if I don't have it? Some of you need to try that. Guess what? It feels good. When your feet get about two inches off the floor, that feels good right there. That feels good. That's good worship right there. If you ain't done it in a long time, try it. Come on, try it. If you ain't clap your hands in a long time, just do that right there. If you ain't say thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings he gave you, you ought to try that. That feels good. Thank you, Jesus. If you ain't shout out hallelujah, guess what? That's the highest praise. It feels good. You should do it. Hallelujah. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. Come on, Jesus is here. Come on, he's the master cleaner. He's the master fixer. He's the master... Man, I love Jesus. But wait, we're not done. We're not done. You can't find your prayer life. If instead of talking to God, all you do is gossip with your coworkers. Ooh, it's quiet. I had a coworker the other day, he came up to me. I'm working at my desk, at my computer, enjoying the Lord, had my headphones in, and I had preaching blast. I think I had Brother Prado in my ear on full blast. And he came and, he came and tapped me on my shoulder. He said, excuse me, are, are you listening to preaching? I said, well, yes, I am. He said, I said, I'm, I, I'm, I, is it bothering you? Can you hear that? Because he's, he's on the other side of the hallway. Now he said, can you, can, I said, can you hear that? He said, yeah, I can hear it. He said, somebody's fired up about Jesus. I said, well, yes, he is. 
If you're not excited about Jesus, I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you. If you're not glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, I don't know what to tell you. If you're not glad, you better get glad. King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know why King David said that? It was 10 generations before his people was allowed to go into the house of the Lord. And he said, guess what, buddy? Brother Stephen, it's my turn. I can go to church today. I can go to the house of the Lord today. I can get cleaned up today. I can get fixed up today. God can change my life today. So guess what? Today can be your day. Today is a day of salvation. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, guess what? Today is a good day to do that. If you haven't been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, yes, it's in the Bible. It's a good day to do it today. Come on, somebody praise God in this place. Come on, there's some chains. Uh, somebody's begin to grab a broom. Uh, come on, I can see it. Uh, somebody's got a broom in their hand. He said, I like that preacher. I uh, guess what? I'm going to go to that closet where I got my skeletons hidden. Uh, I'm going to go to my closet uh, where I got some of my darkness hidden. Uh, and I'm going to clean it up. Uh, somebody say it's spring cleaning time. God help us today. I'm getting even closer to finishing. If you want to know the easiest way to find what's missing, sometimes it helps to have somebody looking with you. So many times we, we try to burden stuff on our hearts by ourselves. And because you think that there's nobody else that understands what you're going through. You come to the church with sin and heaviness on your heart uh, and things on your mind and there's, and there's things troubling you. You can't sleep at night. And you think that there's nobody that cares. You've, you've, you've thought about killing yourself several times. Thinking that the only way out is leaving this earth. But there's hope for you this morning. There's hope in the house for you this morning. And if you really need help, if you're really desperate for help, if you're not too prideful for help, sometimes it helps if you just ask somebody to help you look for it. And God is a gentleman. God is a just God that he knows when we're sincere or not. Well, preacher, I've asked God to forgive me. Did you mean it? Preacher, I asked God to forgive me for all my sins and I, 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 just, I just can't stop doing what I'm doing. Did you really repent? When you was asking God to forgive you, were you in your mind thinking about when you were going to do it again? I'm being, I'm being real this morning. When you ask God, God changed my life, I want to be different. Did you ever think that the preacher could be telling you the truth? And that the only remission for your sins is going in the, in the baptistry and getting washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Did you ever think that that can be the thing that you're missing? Did you ever think that that's be, that could be the thing that's troubling your mind? Did you ever think that that could be the thing that turns your life around? Well, I'm here to tell you that God is here this morning in this house. And if you really want your house to be cleaned, and if you really want things to be different, I guarantee you in the next few minutes when we come to this altar, if you lift up your hands and you say, God, clean me up, God will begin to sweep some things out of your life. God will begin to move some things and rearrange some stuff. Well, you don't mean it guess what you still got sin in your life uh, it's just rearranged dirt uh, but when you ask God to clean me up uh, he throws it away uh, and he forgets about it uh, he sends some of your sins to the east uh, he sends some of your sins to the west uh, and the Bible says they'll never meet again somebody give God a praise for that today I wonder if we can lift up our hands in this place right now. <laughs> Come on, God's been ministering to somebody right now. He's been putting, he's been shooting arrows at your heart this whole message. <sighs> 
But we can't get help if we don't really want help. If I can get some help in the music. We, don't, we, we, can't, we can't get help if you don't really want help. You got to be desperate enough that you don't care what anybody thinks about you. You got you to gotta make up in your mind for yourself. Uh, I'm not worried about my brother. I'm not worried about my sister. I got some things in my life, God, that I need fixing. I've been, I've been looking for my, my joy. I've been looking for my peace. Uh, and I've swept every place to look. Uh, but I know it's here somewhere. I know that it's here around here somewhere. God, I need your help to find it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh God, Jesus. Come on, some of you, you came into this sanctuary this morning you, and you said, this, this is my last time visiting here. I, I, I haven't felt what I wanted to feel. I guarantee you, if you really make up your mind right now, God can fix you. Amen. God can clean you up. You've been stuffing stuff under the rug, but guess what? If you pick that rug up, baby, God got a blessing for you this morning. I need Matthew 6 and 33. Matthew 6 and 33. In prayer, God showed me something. I was fasting. I was on my face. I said, God, I, I got to make sure that I say what you want me to say. And this scripture happens to be my favorite scripture in the Bible. I, I, there's, there's plenty that I can choose from. And I've quoted this scripture. I've read this scripture. I've, I've, I've put it on my dashboard. But this scripture says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it says in his righteousness, everybody say his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. And in prayer, God spoke to me. He said, Cornelius, you got to seek me before you try to clean yourself up. I said, God, why, why, why is that? He says, you got to seek my righteousness. He said, and then all these things will be added unto you. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like some stuff is missing. And there's some stuff that needs some adding to, but you can't get addition if you don't admit that there's some stuff missing. And I said, God, well, well I know I need to be holy. I know I need to be clean. I know I need to be pure. Why am I seeking your righteousness? He said, I'm glad you asked. I need Isaiah 64 and 6. It says, but we are all as unclean. And it says, and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. You want to know why God says you got to seek him first and you can't clean your house on your own? It's because you can't clean your house with a dirty rag. You can't clean your house with a dirty rag. All you're going to do is smear the dirt everywhere. And God says you can't clean yourself up because every time you try to do it, you're going to mess it up. And every time you try to do it, you're going to leave some trash behind. But if you let me clean you up, and if you let me wash you, and if you let me clean you, I'll make you whole. I'll add some things to your life. I'll change you. I'll give you direction. Is there anybody in this house that needs God to clean them? Come on, stand to your feet. God is in this place. Uh-huh. I'll provide the sacrifice that you need. I wonder if we can just all lift up our hands together. Step one to being clean is saying, God, I ask you to forgive me for all of my thoughts all of the things I've said, all of the things I've done, all of the things I've, all the places I went to, everything I listened to, you gotta be real with God. You can't, you can't come to God faking 
because God knows when your house is clean or not. When your neighbor comes to your house and, and you tuck stuff in a closet, your house looks like it cl it's clean. But if you open that closet, you got a pile of dirt in there. But God says, I know where is that, son. I know where is that, daughter. And if you give it to me this morning, I'll take you and I'll make you completely clean. But right now, lift up your hands and begin to ask God to forgive you. Come on, there's some stuff you've been holding on for 30 years. There's some stuff you've been holding on against people that don't even know you anymore. But you need to release them this morning and say, God, forgive me of the hurt. God, forgive me of my bitterness. God, forgive me of my anger. God, I don't know where my joy is at. I don't know where my peace is at. I can't stop crying. Come on, if you really mean what you're praying, come on, I don't want nobody looking around. Don't look at your brother and say, I know he needs some help. I know he needs some prayer. No, brother, it's you that needs prayer this morning. No, sister, it's you that needs prayer this morning. You've been praying for everybody else. You've been thinking about everybody else. But it's me standing in the need of prayer. God said, if you seek, if you seek, you shall find. He said, knock and the door shall be open unto you. But you got to seek God first. Come on, some of you, you've been, you've been visiting church for months and you have never stepped out of that pew. But I guarantee you, if you step out of that pew, God's going to see the effort and God's going to put a broom in your hand. And when you back your way to this altar, he's going to clean you out and he's going to wash you. And if you're seeking the Holy Ghost, he's going to fill you. Is there anybody in here that, that asks God, God, make me clean. God, make me clean. Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost, uh, come on, this altar is open. I'm not begging you. I'm not asking you. But if you got some stuff in your heart, uh, you don't need to pray for anybody else. Uh, you just come right here and say, Jesus, I'm here. God, clean me up, God. Uh, God, lift me out, Jesus. Uh, God, fill me up. Uh, come on, that's it. The Holy Ghost is falling on some of you right now. Come on, close your eyes. Uh, clear, close your eyes. Uh, Come on, find a corner. God, come on, come on, find a floor. Come on, when the tears are flowing, you let them flow. That's a washing. That's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, that's what God wants, sis. Come on, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. That's it right there. That's it. What he, that's it. Come on, you need a breakthrough. You need a healing. You, my God. Right now is a good time to learn. God, clean me up. God, clean me up. God, clean me up. Come on, that's it. Come on, pray for yourself. Cry out for your soul. God. of the enemy. Come on, pull it from out the rug. Go to that closet. Come on, get your prayer life back. Get your prayer. sitting on the sanctuary come on you need a breakthrough come on you ain't praised God in a long time you ain't thank God in a long time come on that's it wherever you are if you can't get to the front you close your eyes and say Jesus fill me up Jesus fill me up Jesus clean me up Come on, that's a sound that Jesus loves to hear. Come on, that's a sound that Jesus loves to hear. Go, 
Ghost. Come on, you're not going to get it unless you're desperate. You're not going to get it unless you're desperate. Come on, you say, God, fill me up. God, fill me up. tears down your face. Uh, if you ain't prayed through in a long time, uh, you better get some soreness in your heart. Come on, if you want it, you can get it. If you want it, you can get it. If you want it, you can get it. Come on, God can clean you up. God can clean you up. Come on, that's I it, buddy. That's it, buddy. That's it, buddy. I want Jesus. God, I'm tired of trying to clean it up myself. Come on, that's it. Breakthrough. Huh? Come on, that's it. Breakthrough. Huh? Come on, that's it. Breakthrough. Huh? Come on, that's it. Breakthrough. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first. Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.